All right, guys, we're back to, together again. We're going to do World War II Begins. Um, we're gonna go, this section two is split up into two parts um, due to the length. And uh, so we're just going to do part one for the week. Um, and then you'll have some questions to answer at the end. So again, we're just going to do part one of section two uh, this week. And next week, we'll continue on. So in 1938, uh, Germany and Hitler uh, violate the Treaty of Versailles. Here is a picture of Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler, who was his basically second in command, are surveying the SS troops in the Nuremberg, September 1938. Here is this during this time. This is really where Hitler shows Europe and America where he's going, and he limits immensely the rights of anybody who is not German, especially the Jewish people. Um, as you can see, these are the SS troops. This is his military. He rebuilt his um, military from 100,000 to 550,000 soldiers through an army draft. So the Austrian Anschluss, well, I'm sorry if that's my German, but Anschluss, uh, Schloss, uh, Anschluss means unity, okay, unite. So Austrian Anschluss is the unity of Germany and Austria, and he did do this by force. Um, uh, Hitler wanted to unite all German speakers in one country. Uh, also, he wanted to gain defensible borders, soldiers, and more resources. European leaders did not stop Hitler. Instead, they tried to buy peace by giving him into his demands. They believed that if they gave him into his demands enough, and once he got enough land, that he would be happy. Some other reasons were uh, World War II still loomed large in the, uh, as in the shadows of what is happening now, and a lot of leaders did not, they feared another bloody uh, war. They did not want to get into something again. Another idea was some thought that Hitler's idea to unify all German-speaking people made some sense. Why wouldn't all people who spoke Germany be under one country? And number three, many assumed that the Nazis would be more interested in peace once they gained more territory. Um, so Hitler demanded Austria give important posts to Nazis. So before, before Hitler took over, he went in and told the Austrian uh, government, Austrian chancellor, that um, he needed to give important posts to Nazis. Okay, So the prime minister thought, okay, yeah, you know what, let's put this to a public vote. Well, Hitler did not like this idea, so he sent in troops immediately into Austria and announced the unification of Austria and Germany henceforth. Hitler taking over his, uh, Austria. He tried to do it diplomatically, or not diplomatically, through the government, kind of like how he did in Germany, but the Austrian uh, prime minister or chancellor was going to say, okay, let's see what the public says, and, Ger um, and Hitler's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, this is what's happening. So why was Hitler unafraid to violate their Versailles Treaty? Um, well, he didn't think the West would use force to stop him. And you know what? Primarily, he was right at the beginning. Um, nobody wanted to get back into a war. Nobody wanted another world war. So, yeah, they were like, they weren't going to. Um, so he sent troops in to demilitarize the Rhineland. So remember, right now, Great Britain and France have their military down there, and they've split up areas and they're occupying these areas due to that so he goes in kicks them out and guess what the west does nothing other european powers do nothing they just watch next thing he do, he does he makes alliances with treaty and, and it would make alliances with italy and japan it is in violation of the versailles treaty again nobody does anything what is going on is this idea of appeasement, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the next um, next slide. But um, Hitler, Britain and France allowed Hitler to do this um, in order to avoid war. Hitler wanted Sudetenland, an area of Czechoslovakia that had some ethnic Germans. Well, 
they were allowed to do that because they did not want to get into um, war. Uh, Austria was mainly fine with Germany annexing them. Um, they were fine. They're like, okay, well, we speak German. I guess we can do that. However, Czechoslovakia, um, who had a democratic government, was not okay and resisted. And Czechoslovakia was also allies with France and the Soviets. In this picture, it is Germany and um, the Prime Minister of Great Britain shaking hands. And this is at this Munich Peace Conference. And the icon came out of this was an appeasement, the policy of trying to keep the peace by accepting some of the demands of the aggressor. And this is what uh, Great Britain and France did a lot during this time. They appeased Hitler with some of his demands, hoping that eventually he would be satisfied. Uh, the Prime Minister is named Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. And he believed a peace with honor, a peace in our time. That's what came out of what he felt was the uh, um, the Munich Peace Conference. And uh, however, he knew he knew that this wasn't going to be a long lasting peace. Um, he came out with it, but basically he was buying time for Britain's military to rearm. So the idea he comes back and says, "Okay, a peace with honor, a peace in our time," but. In the backgrounds, behind all this, he's building up the military because he knew that this could not withstand. Um, so a result of this appeasement, guess what? Hitler invaded and took all of Czechoslovakia. Took it, invaded it, and um, some of the people were happy, some of the people weren't. Um, this Sudeten woman, woman, I'm sorry, overcome with emotion, pays homage to the Wehrmacht uh, as the Wehrmacht enters the Sudeten border town of Cheb in October 1938. Um, some people are happy. This woman, look at, she is very happy. She's um, uh, saluting Hitler and the German army. Uh, again, we do nothing. Europe does nothing. Hitler... Uh, Hitler wanted this area back, this Sudeten land, because it was 90% um, German. Um, so, yes, he invades. Okay, wait, I'm sorry. This is, he takes all of Slovakia. He continues to want more. However, England and France refuse because they're going to try to, okay, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So he takes he invades and takes all of Czechoslovakia. Now, Hitler wants Poland. This time, Great Britain and England are not going to use appeasement and allow this to happen. They refuse um, and said that they would defend Poland if there was an invasion. Well, what does Hitler do? Okay, well then let's invade. That is part one. We're going to stop here. There are some questions for you to answer, and there also is um, the next, so you have an assignment pr prior to this, par, uh, section one, and you answered some questions, or you answered an essay question, depending on what class you were in. Now you have this part, this is chapter, this is section two, and you were listening to this, and now you're going to, both classes will be answering some questions, and then the next assignment after this is a short essay that I want everyone, whether you're U.S. history or your dual credit, you'll be answering this on a, in a separate tab under distant education. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. We will pick up with part two next week.